some of these books, I just, I don't know why I kept reading them, because they were terrible. We'll get to that as we go on, but some of these books, I just, I can't. Why were they written? That's, that's all I'm going to say. Excuse me, Mr. Airplane, I'm trying to film. We'll just wait for you to pass, I guess. Are you good now? You're, nope, you're still going. We're just going to wait then. We'll just wait. Oh my god, how long is this flight? Hey guys, it's Jay and today I'm here with my July wrap up for 2017. I read a total of eight books, which I think is so good because I thought I was going to read like three, maybe if I was lucky. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I read, I actually finished on like June 30th or whatever the last day of June was, but I had already filmed my wrap up so I'm counting it as July, whatever. And it is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. This is the third book in the Harry Potter series. If you don't know already, hi, my name is Jay and I'm 21 years old and this is my first time reading the Harry Potter series. I loved this book so much. I think it's my favorite one so far that I've read. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. Obviously, Sirius Black is my love and my life and also I still love Hagrid so, so much. If you want to see my experience of reading Harry Potter for the first time as a 21 year old, then I shall leave that up there and you can check out my full thoughts on this book. The next book that I read is Just One Day by Gail Foreman and I ended up giving this a 2 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I wanted to love it. I really did because everybody says it's like an adorable contemporary book, but like no. Just... As an only child, Alison Healy really doesn't want to disappoint her parents when they have big plans for her future. As a graduation present before she starts her pre-med degree, her parents decide to give her a trip to go travel Europe. While on this trip, she meets a boy named Willem who convinces her to spend one day with him in Paris. As I said, I really wanted to like this book. I really did. Everyone seems to rave about it and how cute it is and how fluffy and contemporary and amazing it is, but I just really, really did not like this book. The main character, Allison, really pissed me off. Everything she did just made me angry. The whole relationship between Willem and Allison just really bothered me. It was like a humongous case of insta-love. To the point where they literally knew each other for like half an hour and Allison became obsessed with him and was like, I love him so much, I can't live without him, he's my heart and soul. And if you've been on this channel for a while, you know, like, I am not a fan of the whole insta-love thing and this was, like, the biggest case of it. I just thought that Allison's whole take on life and the decisions that she made were really stupid. I am all for character development, but the way that she, like, changed for the better to become more confident, it was like she had to be rude to everybody who loved and cared for her. And personally, like, that, that's not character development. That's, that's just a downhill, just a full-on downhill character development. And I just, I did not like it. I did not appreciate it. Uh, if I was rude to my parents, like, the way she was rude to her parents, like, whew, 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 your girl would be grounded for life. I also just really didn't like Willem as a character. He was constantly, like, disappearing from Allison and, like, going off with other girls. And it just, like, rubbed me the wrong way. And I don't understand how she didn't see that, like, this was a red flag, you know? Like, if a guy that you're seeing runs off with other girls and then doesn't tell you why he's running off with other girls, like, hmm, maybe not the best guy to be hanging out with. I'm just saying. I do want to know what happens between Willem and Allison because the ending was also kind of sketchy and just, like, what? what is happening I don't understand so I don't know if I'm gonna pick up the sequel because like I want to know what happens but like they also just piss me off so much so like is it worth it I don't know the next book I despised with such a passion like it's kind of sad how much I hate this book so like I don't even want to go into detail about it but <laughs> if you guys want a full review of this because I have a lot to say about this book but it would be like a super long video and it's just not worth it for this wrap up so if you want my full review let me know down below and I'll make like a book review for this book about how much I hate it basically but it is Once in a Full Moon by Ellen Scheiber and this book follows a high schooler named Celeste Parker who basically just falls in love with a werewolf and it was stupid and just so cringeworthy that it hurt my soul and just I could not deal with this book it was so hard to actually finish it but I'm a girl who cannot not finish a book so I pushed through but like so much cringe so little time the next book I was actually sent by the author so thank you to Julia Ember for sending me a copy of her book in exchange for my honest review I have like a full review of it up on my channel, so if you want to check that out, then it's up there. But it is The Seafarer's Kiss by Julia Ember, and I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The book follows 19-year-old Ursul, who is a mermaid, and she ends up falling in love with a warrior named Ragna. But in order to be with Ragna, Ursul has to make a deal with the trickster god Loki, and things get a little messed up from there. I did have my problems with it, which is why it was only a 3.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads, but 
If you want to see my full thoughts, then clicky clicky up there and you can go to my review of it. The next book that I ended up reading for this month was Something In Between by Melissa De La Cruz and I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. This book follows Jasmine De La Santos who is an exemplary student. She's the captain of her cheerleading squad and she has also just been offered a spot as a national scholar for university so when she tells her parents the exciting news she's very disheartened when they tell her that she can't accept the scholarship because she's actually living in America illegally. Now all of her dreams are crumbling around her and Jasmine decides that she's going to begin to rebel for the first time in her life and that's when she meets Royce who is the son of a very powerful politician. Royce's father is actually against illegal immigrants so their relationship is a little bit rocky and it's basically the story of Jasmine trying to come to terms with how she is an illegal immigrant and how she is going to be able to stay in America. I think that the book covers a very important topic and I love that it is an own voices book and I think that it will help a lot of people and have them feeling represented in literature which is why I'm giving it a 3 out of 5 stars for that purpose alone. Unfortunately I really didn't like the book as much as I hoped I would. I think that the writing style was a little bit too simplistic for my personal tastes and I thought that the love was too insta-lovey for my personal taste again. Which we all know I hate insta-love so I was not a fan. I didn't really like the relationship between Royce and Jasmine. I thought that they were very childish. There was a lot of miscommunication between the two of them and they acted more like 14 year olds than the 18 year olds they were supposed to be portraying. And I just didn't feel like there was any character development whatsoever and it just I don't think the story was for me. The next two books I was actually sent by the publisher and they are Mechanica and Venturous by Betsy Cornwell and I'm actually having a giveaway on my channel for this so if you want to check out the giveaway definitely click the link above and follow what it says in the description box for your chance to win these two books but I absolutely loved them they were so dang good. Mechanica is the first book in the series and it is a steampunk fairy tale retelling of Cinderella and then Venturous is the second book in the series. It's a completely different take I can't you know tell you the synopsis of it because there's major spoils in it for Mechanica but I loved these books. I gave them both 4.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I want to say thank you to HMH Teen for sending me these two books as well as letting me host the giveaway so check out the giveaway for sure because they're so good and I want you guys to read them because they're so dang good. Then my final book for this month. I literally finished like 10 minutes ago and I am just so in love with it. It is The Art of Starving by Sam J. Miller and I gave this book a 5 out of 5 stars. It's probably one of my favorites now. This book follows Matt whose life has been getting increasingly harder as time progresses. His sister Maya has run away from home, his mom is about to lose her job, he's constantly bullied for being gay, and he has a crush on the boy who he thinks may be responsible for Maya running away. To top it all off, Matt is quickly developing an eating disorder. As Matt continues to stop eating, he begins to develop supernatural abilities that he uses in order to exact revenge against the boys that he believes are responsible for Maya's disappearance. This book is an own voices male-male relationship focusing on a teenage boy's anorexia. It's a complicated story between Matt and his relationship with food and his body and self-image and self-worth and I think that it was just really well done. There's a lot of truth behind this book and what it's like to have an eating disorder. One thing that probably should be mentioned is that it kind of does glorify eating disorders with the whole supernatural ability concept of the book. Although I do realize that this is a work of fiction, obviously you can't get supernatural abilities from having an eating disorder. But this could be triggering for some people, so if that's something that you struggle with, definitely go into the book with caution. The book gives major We Are The Ants vibes by Sean David Hutchinson, which I also loved so so much, so obviously I loved this book. The writing style is so raw and emotional and just I could not deal with it half the time. And half of the time, honestly, I was confused and was so like what the fuck is going on, but that's how I was with We Are The Ants, and that turned out to be one of my favorite books of 2017 as well, so, you know, I'm digging. I do wish that there was more of the recovery process for Matt, and we got to see more into that. It was kind of glossed over and not really talked about. I want to know if Matt is actually better now, or if he's still struggling with his eating disorder, but overall, I absolutely loved this book. Alright guys, so that was my July wrap-up for 2017. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books. Definitely check out my giveaway for Mechanica Adventures. And I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye!